wasn't the nails that nailed him to the cross, yes. Yes. but it was his love. Yes, Lord. I thank God because it was his love for me. Yes, Lord. Because while he hung on that cross, he had me on his mind. Yes, while he hung on that cross, he had you on his mind. While they mocked him, while they despitefully abused his name, while they pierced him in the side, while they criticized and condemned him, he had you and I on his mind. I thank God because I can say, if nobody else in my life has ever done anything just for me, Jesus did it all. Amen. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Truly, we do thank God, and we thank God just for another opportunity to be in his presence. We thank God for each and every one of you that came out today, and we thank God for all that's already been said and done. I thank God for all those that have spoken well of me. I I, I truly praise and honor God. Because it had not, because if it had not been for the Lord on my side, yes. where would I be? Amen. I do solicit your prayers this morning. I came in and I thought I was okay. I was upstairs and we was getting communion together and I almost uh, passed out. So I'm not sure what's going on in my body. But I know that the devil is a liar. Yes. And he is a defeated foe. So and, and, and God is in control. He holds all power in his hands. We do solicit your prayers also, as has already been said. Our bishop is in the hospital. He is doing much better. I was able to see him yesterday, and his uh, sugar had went down a lot, and they moved him to a room, and I'm sure he's anxious to get back on the road, but God knows all things, and he knows what needs to be done and what we need at any given time. So we thank God and we do praise God because that situation could have been much worse. Amen. But God is good. And so I'm going to ask that you just go with me to the throne of grace. The Lord said we could come boldly to his throne. And Father God, we just thank you and we just praise you. Father God, once again, we're just looking to you, God, the author and the finisher of our faith. Once again, God, we're just looking to you, our source and our strength. And Father God, we ask that as your servant comes to just bring forth your word, God. Father God, that you would just take her once again into the storehouse of your knowledge, God. That you would bring, dip her down, God, and bring her up rightly, dividing the word of truth. Let no flesh glory in thine sight. Oh Lord, but let your will and your perfect will be done. Let the meditation of my heart, the words of my mouth be acceptable in thine sight. Give your people ears to hear, spirits to receive, and let us be not just hearers, but doers of your word thereof. And God, we just turn everything over to you. Let your spirit, your Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and reign in this place. Send your anointing afresh. Let it move like it's never moved before, God. Father God, let your people praise you, God, from the pulpit all the way to the door. Let it overflow out into the street. In Jesus' name, we do pray and we thank you and say amen. Amen. Won't you go with me to the book of Exodus? And we're going to begin in the the 33rd chapter. And once you reach Exodus 33, let's go to verse 14. Now we're going to be going through the word today, so um, keep your Bibles handy. And when you have it, I'm going to ask that you say amen. Amen. So Exodus, the 33rd chapter, beginning at the 14th verse, and it reads as thus. And he said, my presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, if thy presence go not with me, 
carrieth not a pinch. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth? And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. And it shall come to pass, while my glory passes by, that I will put thee in a cliff of the rock, and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. And I will take away mine hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. And that's God's word for God's people. And if we would use a focused thought this morning, it would be, Lord, show me thy glory. Now, I don't know about you, but I've sometimes come to a point in my life where I've needed God to do something for me, and I've needed him to do it right away. Amen. I've called on God and I said, Lord, I need you right now. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not a, 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 a defiant thing or a, 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 a arrogant thing to say, God, I need you to move right now on my behalf. Because when you're in the middle of trouble, you need something to happen right now. Amen. When you're in the middle of a crisis, sometimes you need a deliverance right now. It's not a matter of losing faith or not trusting God to move. It's more of a, fa a matter of, I know who you are and I know what you can do and therefore I just want you to do it, but right now. Now we know that the Bible tells us often to stand still and wait on the Lord. Yes. It's already told us that if we wait on him, he'll renew our strength. That we can trust him to move and we just have to stand still and see his salvation. Yes. Matter of fact, I think I preached that a few weeks ago. Yes, Lord. But every now and then, when we're in the middle of a crisis, every now and then, when we find ourselves faced with the Red Sea, every now and then, when the mountains seem to be closing in from every side, every now and then, when we see Pharaoh's army coming up behind us, every now right now. See, it's okay to call on God and say, God, show me yes. your glory. See, 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 yes. see what Moses was doing. Moses wasn't uh, testing God. He wasn't trying God. He was saying, I know who you are. Yes. You see, I know that you was with us when we was back there in Egypt. I know it was you that spoke to me uh, in a burning bush and told me to go talk to Pharaoh. I know it was you that, that, that allowed those plagues to come into the children of them that they needed 
needed to come out of the land that they knew as hard as the times were and to go out into a wilderness where they didn't even know what was going to happen to them from one moment to the next. He sent Moses to do this thing. And then once they got out in the wilderness, he knew that Moses would be a bunch of monk, a bunch of people that would begin to rebel. And Moses found himself in the middle, he said, of a stiff neck people and rebellious people. People that didn't want to hear from God and not, neither did they not want to hear from him but they sure wasn't going to follow a God who they could not see. So God called Moses and he told him to come up to the mountain and Moses went up to the mountain. God gave him the Ten Commandments, the laws that would govern the people and when Moses came down off of the mountain, the people were up a party and they had created a golden calf because they wanted a God that they can see, a God that they can touch. Not the God of their deliverance, not the God that brought them out. They wanted a graven and a molten image, something that they can touch and feel. Moses got upset and he became, he began to feel overwhelmed. Have you ever begun to feel overwhelmed? Have you ever begun to feel like, well, God, I've done everything that you told me to do. I've gone where you told me to go. I've said what you told me to say. I followed your Lord. I followed your word. And yet my world is still crashing down around me. Have you ever felt overwhelmed? situation. What are you doing? I know you're there, but I can't feel you. God, where are you? Well, Moses was at that point and he said, talk to God. He said, God, show me your glory. I Show me who you are. Show me all of you so that I can begin to feel your presence even the more. So I can grasp who you are even the more. Yeah. Now that seems like a vague yeah. request. He, he could have asked God for anything. Yeah. He didn't ask God to make him a great name. He didn't ask God to make the people obey him. He didn't ask God to make him a good ruler. He said, I just want more of you. I just want to feel you even the more. I want to see you even the more. So when we're in the middle of our situation and we're calling on God, it's not because we don't know who he is. We know that he is Jehovah Jireh, our provider. We know that he's Jehovah Shalom, the Lord God of our peace. We know that he's Jehovah Raha, the Lord God, our healer. We know that he's Jehovah Tiskanu, the Lord God, our banner. We know that he is El Shaddai, the almighty God. We know that he's El
in me. Yeah. Every now and then. Go ahead and get a little bit weak. Go ahead. Every now and then. Our pockets and our money get a little bit funny. Every now and then. We don't know where our next meal is coming from. Sometimes we don't know if we're going to have a job or get a job or keep a job or have a home or get a home or keep a home. Because he just told you that things are going to get better. 